This time on Raven's Wing, we drive from home in Nevado, California, back to Cabrales Boatyard at Puerto Penasco in Sonora, Mexico. We had to load the truck fully with every bit of material and uh, tool we think we would need to get the work done, not knowing about supplies down there, which were actually pretty limited. So with a full load, we hit the road. Okay, it's the Button Willow rest stop. Let's get out and have a safety check around the load and back. You guys gonna see this in play? It's a uh, like a five eighths foam core with carbon skins. You can see the shape of this panel. It was meant to be a bulkhead in a big boat. I was able to get my hands on that. It's gonna help us do our fabrication work. Tarp movement here. Okay, everything looks good. Show you where I get to sleep tonight. There's the bunk. Okay, off to the rest stop. It's 5.40 a.m. After a night at the rest stop on an interstate 8 at the California-Arizona border. I'm the idiot who climbed out of the back of the pickup without unlocking the car with the key first. So of course set off the car alarm. Don't all these good people are trying to sleep. Oops. All right, let's get on to Yuma, find some coffee and egg big. Yeah, this is Colorado River. miles back in Winter Haven, it was 3.49 a gallon for diesel here in Yuma, 2.28, so we will fill up. And now it's on to the border. Well, that sucks. We're now back on Interstate 8, driving west towards El Centro, California, 70 miles away from the Mexico border, because we got to the border at 7 a.m., top of that thing. Registration valid from September 25th, 2019 to September 30th of 2020. Truck has a three month out of date tags. We never got a registration renewal. Turns out the DMV's got the wrong license plate in the system. So I got to go find a DMV office, get this truck updated before I can go into Mexico. It's a complete cluster down there. They wanted to search the whole contents of the bed even though he told me I couldn't drive in Mexico without a date plates. And while it's, they're going through the search thing, basically the guy says for 200 bucks in cash, he will forget about my out of date plates. A little while later, he made it $100, but I decided pretty stupid to drive in a foreign country with expired plates. Nice three hour waste of time. And here we go looking for a DMV. So day is gonna take a while. Typical, right? Okay, second attempt. It's now 11.45. We got the uh, fresh tags on the truck. Back from El Centro, here we go. Mexico only, no USA return. Here's, here's the border wall. This is uh, Calexico. I guess Mexicali on the other side. Here we go. This is uh, State Highway 3 in Sonora. It is desolate. And the shimmering glow out there to the right is the end of the Colorado River. Man, you better be prepared to drive this road with being self-sufficient. There's nothing out here. I'm about halfway from Mexicali to Puerto Penasco. It's a four hour trip. Wow, look at this. Driving to the desert. Dunes, and that's the Sea of Cortez. And off to the right, South Colorado River peters out to nothing in the desert. You can see some waves out there on the sea. This one's going to be windy, so I'll turn the volume off. This is right off the highway.
Okay folks, Saturday morning, December 5th. We're back at Raven's Wing here at Cabrales in Puerto Penasco. She's filthy dirty. There's a fine sand dust that blows all over this place. That's a problem. Look at all this crap is everywhere. Okay, so what's in stock? We're going to fit the uh, primary rudder to the boat, which means changing the cassette, putting the insert in. We're gonna move the engine to a new mount right back here and figure how that's going to work. Um, this one allows for way too much wave splashing. It hits the engine when we're sailing in rougher seas. That's caused trouble. Uh, you can see how this escape hatch isn't quite flush with the hull. We have the newer, thinner model made in stiff carbon. we we'll replace that so it'll sit flush. See. The radar is going to come off of this single pole and be on a double stack right here, a little shorter. Um, it was originally over there because the wind vane steering was going to be here, but we've abandoned that concept because wind vanes don't work on parent wind boats. Big project actually started. These fixed ports are coming out and side will get rebuilt and we're putting in three opening ports here uh, we're going to unstop the mast and we've got to fix the tides track at the very top is separated from the mast just a little bit it needs more clips up there we're going to do a couple more upgrades to the boom add third reef uh, integral reefing inside the boom so we have to put in a new shiv box this side the windows are about to come off we're gonna when the mast is off lift the dagger out and shim the bottom of the case to stop the flopping there's still a little bit of flopping of the head of the board back and forth underway we're gonna get rid of that a bunch of paint work we're gonna repaint the bow spread all the orange accents uh, got some gray touch-ups to do finished painting where the uh, main sheet bases got fixed in September. Uh, also inside, pilot berth right there. We're going to widen it out because you really want to put your head on this end and it's too narrow and really there's a bunch of wasted space right in here. So we're going to make that bigger and I think that's it for the primary ones. Okay, a lot to watch in the coming days. Here we go. Good morning. Sunday, 7.49 a.m. It's cold here. Got a good hot cup of coffee going. Okay, yesterday's progress all day went into getting the old windows out on both sides. And these black panels are the fill-ins of those areas. And once this is all done, we'll cut in the new ports to these uh, black carbon areas. So these are um, pure flat panels and installing aluminum frame port lights, they have to be on totally flat surfaces. So the boat's got all these curves to it. So we're gonna have these compromises uh, where flat meets curve and we're just gonna do some kind of a um, sloping and fairing job for that. So what I did yesterday was work on getting them all flush on the inside so we'll go out and look outside and see how we have to clean that up. Today's projects are going to be, this is the uh, pilot berth. I got the edge torn off and we're going to make this thing come out to about here. So you can sleep with your head up this way and your feet forward. Um, it's just not quite wide enough as a bed the way it is. It was done to be more of a couch, but we really need this berth. It's great when there's four people aboard. We're going to do that. Those are the old ports. Took a while to get them off, get all the old caulking removed, cleaned up. And this is what the mess looks like out here. So this will all get fared in. You can see some of these corners are standing proud. That's the curve. We'll rebate this back to flush it up. But this area in here where the new window is going to be, will be on a nice straight panel all three times. And once all that work's done, then I'll redo the black 
in the black zone. And here finally you guys can see the drifting sand that's here. Look at how dirty the boat is. She was crystal clean when we left here two months ago. And I gotta clean the solar panels off. This stuff is kind of a disaster, but it's just sand and it washes off pretty easily. But clearly when it comes time to paint, we'll have to work on that. There's Marvin and Lori's boat. That's Generation M, Gen M. He's doing a full topside paint job. They pulled out the day before we did. They're hauled out, so there he's doing all their work. He's been working five and a half weeks so far, just jamming every day. His family's up with the grandparents in Tacoma. He's back to being a boat builder. So it's fun having a compatriot. He built his boat a couple years before, launched before we did. Okay, busy Sunday. Ah, glorious sun, here it comes. Cabrales Yard. Lunchtime Monday. Okay, here are the windows in their worst shape they're gonna be. Starting to fare in the black panels to that are flat to the curved hull. So it's kind of making compromises where things either stick out or um, are sunken in compared to the hull. So that's the inside. So I uh, hear I took the um, Little oscillating tool and made little cuts, bevel cuts in the carbon to get rid of the carbon, get back to the foam. This corner stood out really big. But I gotta be careful because you know the new window is gonna be like in here. So I can only really work on the extreme edges. So I'm gonna mark the windows first and know where I can do some fairing around here. Kind of a mess, huh? Okay, so that project. The other one that's going is the uh, radar. So the radar is gone, and the whole appendage that was here is cut off, and that's coming out nice. Smooth it like it was never there. And the new tower is gonna go right here in the middle. Move this guy over a little bit. The radar will clear these light and antenna poles. I'll go show you the, uh, the new radar mount box being built reusing the foot pad because these holes are exact so I don't have to do any alignment. There you go. So this thing will stand up on top. Mini tower on top of the main tower. Put this one fill it in. These fillets are drying right now. Once all that's done, a little bit of sanding and I'll glass these in. Let's go see what the neighbor's doing. That's him walking around. He is spraying new blue paint on his hulls. He's done a huge shop getting this thing ready. Last night he found one more little crack in the side up here. He was out here with a heat gun and materials getting it ready to go after the whole thing was already masked. We're a little close, but hopefully not getting any blue spray in. Yeah, that new blue looks amazing. This guy does great work. Oh, hey, good people. Oh, man. Tuesday evening. This is what, you know, glamour, right? This is what boat work looks like for real. Doing composites. I'm wiped like uh, 11 hours into the day so far. Tiny bit of hand sanding left before dinner. Okay. They are now in place. They're fared in here. They're ready for fiberglass strips to connect the flat panel to the curved boat hull here. Like, you know, about, I think it's a four inch wide glass that'll go all around each of these. Got to do that on each of these three, those three over there. Same thing on the outside that they're prepped now, ready to go for tomorrow. Uh, so that pretty much chewed up today. We also built, um, we got the new bow sprit attachment point all done. That's looking really good. I don't feel like showing you right now. We'll look at outside pictures tomorrow. And we got that uh, radar tower finished up, you know, in rough form. So tomorrow we can fit it and work on mounting it to the boat. Inside projects. This is the, um, well, here's the chart plotter and this is the big metal band it was going on. And this thing, we've got it mounted upside down right up here. See the wires hanging. 
but this thing is really heavy and the its angle doesn't let the screen rotate exactly where we want it plus it holds it crooked so and we made a new one out of carbon with one leg slightly longer than the other so that um, the thing will actually sit level dealing with the curve of the top of the boat there but like everything else these holes aren't quite right and i gotta drill them out bigger um, I don't have the right length screws to mount it, otherwise it would poke through the top of the boat. So what I thought would be just a quick screw that on, of course, is like another few hour project. That's how it goes. Uh, all right, you know what, day four or five of, day four of work in the books, ready for some dinner. Hope you guys are doing well. Wednesday night now. Today I got all the fiberglassing done to glass in these panels to the hull and hopefully you guys can't even see the glass here. That means I did a good job. So what you're looking at is um, three inch wide fiberglass tape over Bondo and fairing filler. I don't know if they go really close. Can you see the glass? So yeah this looks like hell but it's actually in really good shape in terms of blending the old with the new so uh, same thing happened on the outside today that's all done this was somebody did the count one two three four times six on the inside and six on the outside so it's like 50 something little pieces of fiberglass it's a big production line it got super hot up into the 70s in the direct sun on the um, starboard side just for a little while while I was doing this. I was racing against the clock, but got the peel ply on. And if you don't know what peel ply is, everybody, that's this stuff. It's nylon, non-stick. Here, turn these lights on. And here comes peel ply coming off. So what's going on here is you put the fiberglass up and then you lay this peel ply on and you squeegee hard, you push it and it pushes all the air bubbles out and it leaves you with a nice, fine painting surface here and then I'll have to take fairing putty and fill in the fabric weave right here. Good Friday morning to you. We're going to talk steering on this windy morning. Okay so here's the rudder cassette. This is Raven's Wings second rudder. This is a better rudder shape than the first one I built and you see this big gray primer area with a trim tab built into it that's now been glassed in and hidden. The trim tab was originally there because the tower has a uh, wind vane steering system. It's supposed to be here with some control lines coming down and that was going to steer the trim tab which would in turn drive the main rudder. But um, more and more research and talking to people with experience wind vanes on a faster apparent wind sensitive boat they're just not really keeping up so we're abandoning that our autopilots work really well so I glassed in that tab so now we got to fit it to the cassette the other problem if you go back five years ago in the building blog on cartridgeboat.com you'll remember that our rudder was pretty vertical coming out of the cassette I'll go on this side and when we first launched the boat the steering was really heavy the tiller was very heavy in your hand so we ended up having to um, rake the rudder, the bottom rudder forward to put more, you want like 20% of the surface area ahead of the pivot axis. And once we did that, the steering went totally neutral and light and very good. The way that got accomplished is we put this weird looking bulb on the front of the first rudder. Let's look at that. Here it is in the pickup. So if you look down the line, see that gray area that sticks out that's the basically it's two inches at the top of the rudder which um, pushing in the cassette which pushes the foot here almost six inches forward it totally changed the angle of attack the rake on that but this didn't work at all because this you know it's kept cracking and it just makes the rudder look weird the proper way to do it i think now is to put a shim so we built this at home this fiberglass shape was taken off the front of this rudder, made two of these, put um, a wooden core, good old growth fur, 
and glassed it all together. You can see the, the idea. I've just been working this morning to fit this on nice. This thing is now going to get glued into the cassette. What you're left with is a new track for the rudder to slide down. And yes, for you people noticing the details, the distance between here where my thumb is and this carpet, it's not going to touch. Um, I can either shim it with a bunch more carpet. I think we'll try it without it. Um, but the, all this area holds tightly against the rudder plus the very front of it. I think it's going to be enough. So with that, we'll get a better rudder system and finally a permanent fix. Okay, here it is with the shim in the right position. So we want about 15% of the rudder ahead of the pivot axis. So I'll try to put my finger there. That's the pivot axis. You can see the front of the cassette. I think we have the rudder angled properly now. Again, when the rudder was more vertical, it created a really, really heavy helm because you're fighting with your hand too much of the water here. Water helps you steer itself. I think we're going to go. I'm going to glass it in like this. One aspect about hanging out here at Cabrales is these guys were known for building shrimp boats, and they, they still are, still making them. So these blue hull white tops boats, are they all belong to the Cabrales team here. I just love their names. Invincible, Navigante. This one's the Gladiator. The names just get getting bigger, and they're bringing the fleet home right now because but today, this morning, early, like 6 a.m., or just as it was getting light anyway, I pulled Titan out of the water. That's the biggest name yet. It's cool. We get hauled out with the same travel lift that does this, what is this, like about a 100-foot shrimp boat? Interesting that this yard is a mix. You know, they started 75 years ago building commercial boats out of wood and they progressed into metal. But uh, as the shrimping industry is shrinking, they've gotten into pleasure boats. So across the street through the yellow gate is the main storage yard. And I'd say there's 50 sailboats over there. And it looks like we got about 30 boats here in the primary yard. And finally this, one that's in uh, kind of rust color. This is a tuna boat. But hopefully someday this will be a big tuna fighting machine. It's quite impressive to be working around underneath this thing as they, when I was here before, when Colin and I were here, they were doing building work on it, but it has stopped for now. It's a big ship. All this to move it over a few feet. Gladiator over here so they can get uh, tightened to fit in between the others there. Surprising to see this huge thing moving. I looked up from my sanding. There's the direction boss. And here comes Titan. Let's see which one's bigger. I wonder if radios would make this easier. Salvador, the owner, later told me that yelling and whistling works a lot better than the radios they tried. It's a big yard until they start doing this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, God, they almost hit the other one. That was got to be less than a foot. Well, that's about three feet away from the head of the crane over there. All right, spin the wheels, boys. Hmm. Red shirt's not happy with the driver. Don't actually know why this is so hard. Alright, I'm tired of holding the camera, so we're going to turn this off. 
Hopefully they'll get this thing parked. Back to work. We got paint to apply. Well, I had guessed this would be about eight days of work in total. You guys just watched the first week, and there's a lot more to go. Next time we'll uh, finally tackle the steering. I avoided it for a few days because it meant uh, really modifying the back of the boat quite a bit. So that Monday morning, the second Monday, started out with a saw and chopped a chunk out of the back of the boat. So that'll be pretty exciting to see. Please be sure to subscribe in YouTube so you get notified when the next one comes out. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody.